In you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Release me from the snare they have hidden for me, for you indeed are my refuge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Please join me in offering this Mass for the Weinecker families, Franz and Barbara, Frank Jr., Kay, Ernst, and Nina. As we walk with the Lord on our Lenten journey, he shows us not only the way forward, but how God has been present and active throughout salvation history, building our trust and confidence in God's plan. Let us acknowledge our need for God's mercy as well to strengthen us along this journey as we walk through Lent with Christ to the cross. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all of his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he had made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him the best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them in Dothan. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, we must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, just throw him into the cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. They then sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, balm and resin to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to these Ishmaelites 
instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land, he ruined the crop that sustained him. Them. He sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. When the Lord, the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains, till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized, seized the servants and won they beat another, they killed, and the third, they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the honor of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and leave his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has he been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce his fruit. 
when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, remember the marvels. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Again and again, God's people have had to remind one another, and at times the Lord himself sends prophets or messengers to remind us what God has done. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but when I'm struggling for whatever reason, my, my focus tends to narrow on the present moment and whatever issue it is that I'm struggling with. I, it's almost like we put blinders on at times and we miss the bigger picture. Especially in our day and age, we're blessed to be able to have not only easily affordable books of God's word, but biblical scholars and a rich understanding of our Judeo-Christian history of relationship of God's people with the personal God who created us in love and longs for our salvation. We do have so many ways that we can remember Sometimes we need to go back to the beginning, to the book of Genesis, as we do today, to see how often God's people, even the chosen ones like Joseph, experienced hardship in their lives as well. It doesn't mean that God is absent, but God has a plan to lead us through hardship whether it's something as serious as a threat to our lives as it was with Joseph, or something as trivial as things not going as we planned on a given day. God has a plan. And the more that we remember, the more that we remind one another of the plan of God's salvation, God's gift of salvation, the more peace we can find. But the more that we hunger, like some of Joseph's brothers and the, uh, some of the religious leaders in Jesus' time, the more that we hunger for riches or for power, the more frenzied we become, the more fearful, the more protective, the tighter we hold on to the things of this world. But the more we remember not only what happened in biblical times, but the more we remind one another of how God has been at work in our lives and in one another's lives, the more trusting we become, the more peace we find, the easier it is to let go of our fears and to follow the Lord through the ups and the downs, knowing that he has a plan and our salvation is part of his plan.
placing our faith and trust in God's providential care, we give voice to our needs and the needs of all people. For the church on this journey of Lent, that our prayer and penance and our listening to God's word may deepen our love for our Savior and our gratitude for his pain-filled redemption. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God, who softened the hearts of Reuben and Judah toward their brother Joseph, may change and soften the enmity of hearts today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who receive Jesus in this Eucharist may make him the capstone of our lives, entering into his sufferings so as to share his glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been sold or forced into slavery, for all who suffer oppression under the hatred or greed of others, that Jesus, who shared their fate, may become their divine liberator. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, that as they bore good fruit in the Lord's vineyard in this life, so now they may drink the new wine of his glory in the next, especially the Weinecker families, Franz and Barbara, Frank Jr. and Kay, Ernest and Nina. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, as you are pleased by the obedience of your servants and your prophets, help us to follow you more obediently, more faithfully, more trustingly in your plan for our salvation. Help us to bring one another with us along that path with your Son. As we join our prayers with his and ask the intercession of his blessed Mother Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. We remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. We remember also our brothers and sisters especially Weinecker family, Franz and Barbara, Frank, Gino, Kay, Ernest, and Nina, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Martha and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may make it to be co-earths to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And it will be your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins.
On behalf of those joining us by video, we pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> as I mentioned to you earlier this week, tomorrow we have a funeral for a firefighter uh, from our town, a firefighter of, uh, in serving the fire department of Norwood, uh, John Volanti. So I'd ask that you keep John and his family and uh, all the public servants who will be involved in this funeral tomorrow in your prayers. We're so grateful to have them serving us, even at the risk not only of death, but of uh, injury and of sickness, such as John faced as a result of the smoke that he uh, had to deal with in serving the community. It is a funeral that is not open to the public given the large number of people who are expected, uh, but certainly if you're still available to help with hospitality, I think Courtney might need one or two more people. And we would appreciate that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.